As I said, there are elements of this ancient global mind control program that have been detected by some people and groups who think that they are onto the truth. They think they know who or what is controlling the game. Because of this, many of you will come across these beliefs in your own life journey. Many of you have been drawn to some of these beliefs, including those with the moniker of conspiracy. You were drawn to them because the ideas are very compelling and ring true to you, and that's the danger. You're being misdirected away from the truth. As it stands, not a single one of these beliefs or theories is accurate as to who and what is pulling the strings of the ancient global mind control program. Some of these beliefs and theories are sincere because they are based on a collection of decent evidence. Evidence that unfortunately leads the researcher and seeker to wrong conclusions. Some of these beliefs and theories are nothing more than intentional disinformation created to either mask a secondary mind control program or created for the purpose of financially benefiting the dishonest promoter. Either way, if you believe any of this inaccurate information, then you have taken yourself off the path of truth and unwittingly into the path of the ancient global mind control program. This doesn't mean that you are intellectually or spiritually dumb, although some may be just that. But it does mean that you have fallen victim to a very powerful and stealthy dark force mind control program that knows how to play you. It knows how to play everybody and has been doing it for eons. The ancient global mind control programs originating architects are masked in many ways by the existence of people and beings who are secondary mind control manipulators. It is these secondary mind control manipulators that people misidentify as the prime architects and controllers of the ancient global mind control program. The originating architects are the real master controllers and all secondary manipulators are themselves subject to being influenced by the originating ancient global mind control program. This has been going on for so long, it is no wonder that some people mistake the secondary manipulators for the primary originating controllers. Before I tell you who and or what originated and controls the ancient mind control program, here is who and or what are not the primary originators, nor the primary controllers. The following list doesn't ident identify them all, but it will give you a very good idea of the lineup of disinformation and disinformationists attached to the mind control topic. <sighs> Although they are not the primary mind control originators and controllers, all of them manipulate people, most in very sinister and selfish ways that feed the master mind control program. 1. Human individuals, including power-driven elitists and energy vampires. 2. Human groups, including governments, spy agencies and military and cabals. 3. Religious institutions, including leaders and secret sects. 4. Aliens, including reptilians, greys and Nordics. 5. Malevolent supernatural beings, including demons and shadow entities. Six. Oh, sorry, it's opened up a window. <gasps> Time travelers, including physical and psychic activities. And seven, dark wizards, including dark magic spellcasters and mesmerizers. Now that you know what is not the primary force involved here, here is the primary force that is involved. Da -da, drum roll. The originating energy behind the ancient global mind control program is an all encroaching mega powerful force that you have never heard of and are therefore unaware of its existence. And yet markers of its existence aren't just hiding in plain sight. These identifying markers are manifesting right in front of you at a conscious level. <clears throat> Excuse me. The originating energy behind the ancient global mind control program is an unintended aberration of the core matrix prime directive. 
This aberration was born not by design, but despite the fact that it was unsuitable for use in the restoration and rebirthing of our original cosmos through the Core Matrix Prime Directive Spark of Life program. Hmm, interesting. As I have explained in previous reports, says Starfire Tor, our original souls and selves lived in a cosmos that no longer exists. Thanks to being consumed and mostly destroyed by a massive black hole. Around that devouring black hole was and is a rotating ergosphere where some of the elements of our original cosmos were captured and spared the fate of the black hole. The ergosphere captured enough viable cosmic life elements to eventually trigger what I call a spark of life reaction or soul reaction, soul as in S-O-L. Soul energy may also be viewed as divine energy. Over time, the advancement of the soul reaction created the need for a more organized and purposeful way to take the maturing life to its next level of creation. Meeting this need was how the core matrix was created. Just as it functions now, the core matrix was originally a hard drive like system that housed and organized the soul energy into streams of viable coexisting timelines. Core matrix activity included, as it does today, time shift and timeline edit activity. Oh, Facebook is always popping up windows, I have to close. So time shift and timeline edit activity that created new coexisting timelines with new or altered elements. So basically what she's saying there is every time something bad happens in our timeline like we completely annihilate ourselves the core matrix kind of reboots the timeline and like takes us back say like we were in year 2024 and we destroyed ourselves it will take us back to 2015 and try to re-edit the timeline to prevent that life destroying disaster from happening and apparently this has happened numerous times within our timeline and that's why we get a bit disorientated or we get deja vu or we get very tired or we have false memories like we remember something being one way and now it's suddenly another way so this is what's uh, made the uh, Mandela effect come into being so right let me get back to her report the driving need of the core matrix prime directive is to reproduce our cosmos to its original state this is an impossible task since the core matrix only has limited cosmic remnants to work with. It can only work with the viable cosmic elements that it initially recovered from what the ergosphere captured of our destroyed cosmos. Despite this, the core matrix continues to try to achieve the impossible through timeline edits. I kind of feel a bit sorry for it all. This is because of the soul reaction. This is why there will always be time shifts and timeline edits, as well as untold number of coexisting timelines. I explained how the core matrix created a reproduction cosmos using viable building block elements captured by the ergosphere. Among the viable elements were non-viable elements, such as partial or substandard elements that could not be incorporated as is. The core matrix used these non-viable elements as something other than originally were, oh, sorry, as something other than they were originally intended for in the original cosmos. These non-viable elements became the building blocks of dark matter, which is the essential invisible glue that holds everything in our reconstituted cosmos together. Wow, deep. So let me just say that again. The core matrix used these non-viable elements as something other than they were originally created for. These non-viable elements then became the building blocks of what we call dark matter which is supposed to be the invisible glue that holds everything in our reconstituted cosmos together. Dark matter is everywhere, 
existing alongside every viable element and particle that makes up every coexisting timeline. But even though this non-viable matter was repurposed as dark matter, it was all susceptible to the influence of the spark of life, aka soul, reaction. So in time, some of this dark matter advanced beyond its core matrix redesign. Now we get to the crunch. Although it could never again become the life force that it used to be, dark matter had enough soul energy to desire the life that it could not have. Because of this, the aberration was born and gained a purpose that eventually led to the creation of the ancient global mind control program and the rise of evil in our cosmos. Hmm, interesting. Interesting theory. It's just a theory, but interesting. In part two, I will explain how the soul-tinged dark matter insinuated itself into a state of sinister paranormal existence and in doing so generated the existence of paranormal and supernatural beings and events that serve its desires. This includes demonic and spirit possession, the creation and execution of the ancient global mind control program. Oh, sorry, this includes demonic and spirit possessions and the creation and execution of the ancient global mind control program. Excuse me. The primary originators and controllers of the ancient global mind control program are not human or even beings. The energy simply wants to exist in a living state because of its exposure to the soul energy. As the Mind Control Report series continues, I will explain how the ancient global mind control program has put us all in grave danger of nuclear devastation. I will also share some very good news. Now that's what we want. Good news. Keep it positive. That has recently emerged, as well as how you can help the world break free from the global mind control program by Starfire Tour. Starfiretour.com is the website wow fascinating fascinating work i have to say i'm very interested in her theories take what you will from it but i thought i would share that report with you please comment below if you go to the website too please um i want to hear your thoughts on this and uh, yeah i hope you enjoyed that one love peace to everyone and um see you next time